Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. You have found yourself in our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and anything and everything that's going to keep you inspired to write. Coming to you today from my library as I often am. And today I'm going to talk about a very special pen, a pen that I've probably overlooked long enough. And many of you have brought it to my attention in the comments. And so after too much ado, we are going to speak about the Pilot Vanishing Point. Before we begin, let's do a quick pen check. Today, I'm using the Mont Blanc 149. Many of you know that this is one of my favorite pens. I use it quite often. It's also a pen that there's so much to say about. In fact, I may be recording some new content on it soon. But it's such an interesting pen. It has such a long history. And it also is one of those pens that people either heap a bunch of praise upon or direct a lot of anger and vitriol toward. And that makes it that much more fun, I think. Personally, I love the oversized nib and how it writes. I love the balance of this pen, the way that it feels in my hand, and just all the different associations I now have with it now that I've owned it for about a decade and it's been with me through some of the greatest moments of my life. Basically meeting my wife, getting married, having a child, traveling Venice, England, so many things. So it is an extraordinary pen and one that I visit constantly. Pilot is one of my favorite brands of pen manufacturer. And that's because they've produced so many iconic models. From the Pilot Custom 823, that is nearly a perfect pen, all the way down to the humble, but extremely fun and interesting Pilot Kakuno and even other models like the Pilot E95S with its distinctive short body and very long cap. It turns into a very elegant pen and a pen that has an extremely attractive price point for a gold nib. Similarly, the Pilot Vanishing Point is an extraordinary pen that packs quite a few features in a pen that can be had for around 150 US dollars. Most notably of this is the Vanishing Point that gives this model its name. The Vanishing Point is a way to marry the best features of a ballpoint pen with a fountain pen. One of the drawbacks of a fountain pen often is that it takes a few seconds to get into a posture to write something down. Whether you need to unscrew a cap or snap a cap off and post it before you begin writing a note or something else. Now, this pen requires simply a click of the back and that vanishing point snaps right into place, similar to a ballpoint pen. This makes it a perfect pen for many applications. Over at TikTok, I'm often asked, what is the perfect pen for someone working in a medical office or something else where they need to write something down quickly? And the vanishing point always springs to mind. This also means that it's perfect for other applications, whether it's in an office or in a school academic setting. 
There are so many uses for a pen that easily snaps in place and is readily available for you to write with. In fact, I find it perfect for journaling on the go and the clip is very handy at snapping onto your clothes wherever you need it to be, whether that's in the placard of your shirt or in a pocket. One of the things that I really like about it is that the pen faces up when placed in your pocket. So you feel like there's less of a danger of it ever leaking, even if the nib were extended. And that's a comfort to anyone who has put a pen away into their pocket uncapped. So not only is this nib retractable, but it's also rather beautiful. It's very slender and well-crafted. It also has a bit of spring which makes it a very enjoyable pen to write with. It also seems to range on the wet side with the two examples that I've been using. I have it in both blue carbon, well, truth be told, I borrow this one from my wife, and now I have my own in black matte, a pen that I have affectionately named Black Noir. And I've never named one of my pens before, but this pen just begged for a name. So $150 for an incredibly designed 18 karat gold nib that writes very smoothly with a bit of bounce is quite a bargain. And when you put it in a unique package, like the sleek and effective design of this pen, it makes it a compelling proposition for any pen aficionado. Now, the pen is not a light pen. It has a bit of weight to it, and that does make it feel very substantial. So it's not a pen that you have to worry about putting into one of your bags were it overstuffed with other things. Now, personally, when I put certain pens into bags, I put them in pen cases to protect them, but this pen is hardy enough and hard enough in its ectoskeleton design, if you will, that it protects the inside of the pen very efficiently, and I've never had an occasion where it would get cracked. In fact, I can't imagine an occasion where that would be possible. Now, circumference wise, I would say it's a fairly average size pen, similar to something like a Cross Apogee or a Montplan 146. It's much slimmer than a 149 and certainly chubbier than something like a Kaveco Special Collection Red. Nevertheless, it feels very good in the hand, but there are certain design considerations that you should think about before purchasing this pen. The biggest consideration is the placement of the clip. It is right up there at the top of the grip area, if you will, and many people find it obtrusive. Personally, I think it's a fantastic spot to anchor your first finger, but I will admit that that's much easier on my black matte pen than on my wife's blue carbon model. And that's because hers has less of a tolerance between the grip section and the barrel of the pen. So there's less of an indentation, if you will, for your finger to be anchored to. Whereas on the black matte model, there's a bit of a ridge there and my finger fits easily. Now you could look at that either way, whether that's good or bad, but for me, I prefer the way it is on the black matte model because I'm someone whose finger seems to want to migrate down to whatever nib I'm using. And if there's nothing there to arrest my gradual slide, I will soon be where the ink is. Another consideration is the fact that this is a clickable pen and by clickable, click is a noise. So these are one of the considerations that pop up when you think of what is a good pen for you and your situation. It's also part of the fun of this hobby that there are so many variables to each pen that we can dissect them and debate them and obsess over them. And I think that's what makes this a very fun hobby. However, 
consider this for a moment. You might be in an area where clicking a pen is annoying to someone who you might work closely with, or you might be in some kind of an environment that demands complete silence. One I can think of is where I am right now, recording my YouTube. If there were someone slightly off camera, perhaps taking notes, and they were clicking away with the pilot vanishing point, I think I would ask them to politely stop and I would give them a much stealthier pen. So there are considerations to each pen, and this one is certainly a noise factor. And I have tested it to see if there's a way to open it without a click. And if there is, I haven't found it. There's a few other things that you need to know about this pen. One is the filling. To fill this pen, you disassemble it, and then you get to the converter that is attached to the nib. Now, this is where it gets somewhat tricky. It's not a pen that you want to put into a shallow bottle of ink. You need to immerse it all the way up almost to the edge of the converter in order to get a decent fill in this pen. Otherwise, you're only gonna get enough ink for maybe a day or two and you're going to think that your pen dried out or that something happened and you've run out of ink. So make sure you immerse the nib completely all the way up to the metal line just before the converter. The converter itself is a screw type. They used a slightly different version in my wife's pen. Both work fantastic. And if you do use a nice deep bottle of ink, you'll get a great fill that will last for a long time a relatively long time as long as you don't write too much. People often ask me how long will the ink of a certain pen last and it's almost impossible to answer because each of us write different amounts in different ways. We use different papers that suck up different amounts of ink. So it's really difficult to say. I mean, I journal like a fiend. I think you all know that. So I tend to go through ink much faster than say the average person, I imagine. So nevertheless, the pen does hold a decent amount of ink. It should last you a week or a few days anyway, certainly enough to leave the house. The pen is very easy to reassemble after filling. There's a nice bump of metal sticking up just below the ink window of the converter that slides into a slot that then shows you which way to put the nib in. And as long as it's bouncy, once you reassemble it, it'll work fine. Certainly test it before you go. The pen weighs 30 grams and is 140 millimeters long. This makes it slightly lighter than the Mont Blanc 149. It weighs 32 grams and just a bit shorter. Yet it is a very comfortable, very light, very easy to write with pen. So who is this pen for? I think this pen is a great match for anyone's pen collection. There is just such a compelling reason to have a nib at the ready with a click of a button. Whether it's journaling on the go or taking notes or working at your office. Nevertheless, it is a slightly different experience. And I think that's something to consider. There's something a little less stylized about it, if you will. It's a little bit less of a ritual to write with this pen in the way that something like a Mont Blanc Egyptomania, where you undo the cap and rather reverentially place it in front of you because you can't post it, and then begin writing. It, that's a different experience. Whether you consider that luxurious or inconvenient, that's up to you. But from my perspective, it feels a little less stylized and a clickable pen feels a bit more accessible. And I think that's really charming and it gives it this earnestness, like a Jeep Wrangler, as if you're going to ask this pen to do things for you and it's always going to come through like a good friend and a good companion for all of your writing needs for the rest of your life. For those reasons, 
I think that this is one of the best pens out there. I have a lot of affection for mine, and that's probably why it's the first time I ever named a pen. So what do you think of the Pilot Vanishing Point fountain pen? Is it one of your favorite pens? If so, why? Is it the unique design? Is it the retractable nib? Is it how quick and easy it is to use? Is it the 18 karat gold nib in a relatively affordable package? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and for spending part of your week with me. I release new videos each Thursday at noon Eastern time, so you can expect to see another exciting topic then. So take care of yourself and I'll see you further up the road.